योगेन चित्तस्य पदेन वाचा मलम शरीर से वैद्य के लोपकोत्तम प्रवर मुनीना पतंजल प्राजलिरानस्मे आबापुरशाकार शंखचक्रसीधारिण सहस्रशिस श्वेत प्रणमा पतंजलि गुरुर्ब्रह्म गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरसाक्षात्ब्रह्म तस्म श्रीगुरव नम हरि ओ So in the previous session, we have looked at Sutra 4.21, and which was Chittantara Drishya Buddhi Buddhi He Apra Ati Prasanga Ha Smriti Sankarascha. So it was a bit of an involved uh, sutra and bhashya that was covered as part of 4.21, but at the end of the bhashya. it was established that it is the purusha alone which is the experiencer and the swami of the chitta so towards the end of the bhashya we said sankhya yoga dayastu pravada ha those are the right points of view of the sankhya and the yoga etc स्वशब्देन पुषम एव स्वामी चित्त भोक्ता उपयती सो बै दर्म स्व दे रिफर्स टू दि पुष विच इज द स्वामी ऑफ द चित्त एंड द भोक्ता द एक्सपीरियंसर ऑफ दि चित्त सो दिस कम अबाउट फ्रॉम एन अनालिस ऑफ अदर पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू विच वी हेड कवर्ड लास्ट टाइम सो यू वोट गो इन टू दैट today so then the natural question that arises is katham katham meaning in what way in what way is this purusha the experiencer of the chitta so okay we may say that okay the chitta i mean we are seeing criticisms of a kshanika va the momentary uh, sequence of chittas or the world is not real but everything is created by the mind the shunyavada there is nothing etc and we had seen the arguments against that and finally established that okay there is an eternal entity the purusha which is the experiencer of the chitta so now the further question is okay in what way is it the experiencer so we ask us katham and then comes the sutra 4.22 So the sutra says, "Chitter apratisankrama ya tad akara patto sva buddhi samvedanam." So here the mechanism of the knowing, the seeing, or the experiencing is being dealt with. So the sutra says. First term, we'll see it term by term. Chite he. So here the term is chiti. So we have seen chiti shakti. So it's so usually translated as consciousness or sentience. So this chiti shakti is the term used for the purusha, one that has the ability to know, one that has the ability to see, one that has the ability to experience. That is. Now, what is the nature of this chitta shakti? It is aprati sankrama. So, aprati sankrama means it does not have sanchara. It doesn't move about. It doesn't change. So, this kind of aprati sankrama chitta. Now, with respect to that, it is said. Tadakarapattho. What is this tat? Tat is a pronoun, and here it refers to the state of the chitta. 
ஆகாராபத்தோ means on the arrival of that form of that chitta so in in that state okay so in some way form of the chitta so to speak falls upon or is reflected on or is echoed with respect to the chitti shakti and this chitti shakti is aprati sankrama unchanging unmoving etc so when this happens swa buddhi samvedanam it is the experiencing or the knowing because the term vid from which the veda comes is about knowing the knowing of its own buddhi happens so this is the mechanism by which the purusha is said to know what does it know its nitya vishaya is the buddhi so whatever is presented to it by the chitta is known by the purusha the knower the ability to know okay the knowerness the experiencerness the seerness lies within the purusha how does it happen it is by the tadakara patti which we will see shortly so it is as though the chitta it is a material entity it is an instrument it is colored by objects of the world through the functioning of the indriyas and it is said to take the form of those objects and thereby it is so to speak presented to the purusha and when that form falls upon the purusha or is reflected etc that is when the swa buddhi samvedanam happens so here the separation of the knower from the known and the process of knowing is being covered so that is sutra 4.22 so the momentary or the shadika vadins vigyana vadins that we considered uh, in the previous sutras they postulate a continuum and flow of subjective entity which is chitta because they do not posit anything like purusha tattva atma tattva the chitta itself is in a flow moment to moment it is flowing and that's how it registers the experiences in the on the in the belt of time and therefore it is a moving entity the subjective entity in those pan psychics is, is a moving entity movable entity so it is moving from moment to moment moment to moment days to days weeks to weeks months to months years to years decades to decades so it is flowing it is eternally flowing life to life it is flowing life after life it is flowing it is constant flow and therefore it is a flowing entity like a river river flows continuously so that is their position now patanjali here at the very outset in this sutra says aprati sankrama it doesn't move uh, this is a, a, a great kind of counterpoint that you issue posit that it is always in a flow he, patanjali says aprati sankrama so that's an important predicate but then how does it know the chit chit uh, tadakara patto the chitta we have seen in vrutti sarupya sutra uh, uh, how it happens so the uh, purusha entity atma entity is not moving this is an important thing we in a mundane world this cannot be experienced and we cannot be believing in it atma is vibhutatva purusha is vibhutatva and it doesn't move is something metaphysical and we on the mundane plane will never have revelation of it and we will feel it other way around that i am going from stages to stages in my life from infant to to childhood to teenage to youth to adulthood etc so we are moving so the metaphysics tells us that it is not that but then how does it the what how does the knowledge proceed the flow of knowledge is because of tadakara patta 
he is a wonderful postulation so it's a very interesting topic that is coming up okay so let's look at the bhashya so vyasa says aparinamini hi bhoktra shakti hi aprati sankrama cha so this bhoktra shakti which is the experiencer is aparinamini unchanging and aprati sankrama unmoving so about this parinamini arthe prati sankranta iva tad vrittim anupatiti so in the parinamini arthe so which means in the in that which is changing or which can change which refers to the chitta prati sankranta iva as though it is moving it falls upon that chitta so in a sense the bhoktra shakti the shakti that is the experiencer it influences or it falls upon the chitta which is changing and having fallen upon that it now it is as though it is able to change the bhoktri shakti prati sankranta iva so as though it is able to move it, it reaches the chitta and then it takes the shape or the form that the chitta has okay so for example if i am sitting on a chair and my reflection is seen in the mirror i did not have to go to the mirror for my reflection to take place i can remain sitting on the chair and the reflection happened in a not as exact but somewhat similar analogy the bhoktra shakti did not have to move about so it is aprati sankranta but having fallen on the chitta it is prati sankranta iva as though it, it, it can change now another analogy one could say is the moon is steady but its reflection falls into water that has ripples and the reflection on the moon in the water the moon seems to be moving along with the ripples so the moon itself is steady but the reflection is moving so it is prati sankranta iva as though it is moving when reflected on a substance that is ever moving now similarly this bhoktra shakti when it falls upon the chitta it becomes as though it can move and it takes the form and shape so tad vrittim so we have seen in the first chapter vritti sarupyam itaratra so it is as though it takes upon the shape of the vritti or shape of the chitta at the time now tasyascha prapt chaitanya उपग्रह स्वरूपाया बुद्धिवृत्ते सो नाउ टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस बुद्धिवृत्ति व्हाट काइंड ऑफ बुद्धिवृत्ति द वन दैट हैज अटेंड चैतन्यम सो इट इज ऑलमोस्ट एज दो इट हैज अटेंड सम काइंड ऑफ सेंटियंस और कॉन्शियसनेस बिकॉज ऑफ दी influence of the bhoktra shakti that has fallen upon it that is why it is said prapta chaitanya it is not a chetana substance it is jada so it is a material entity it does not have consciousness or sentience but due to the influence of the bhoktra shakti or the purusha it behaves as though it has obtained some sentience so with respect to this buddhi vritti which is 
ಉಪಗ್ರಹ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ಉಪಗ್ರಹ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಸೇ ಸ್ಯಾಟಲೈಟ್ ಆಸ್ ದೋ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಅ ಸ್ಯಾಟಲೈಟ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಆಪ್ಟೈನ್ ದಟ್ ಇನ್ಫ್ಲೂಯೆನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಪವರ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದ ಪುರುಷ ದೆನ್ ಅನುಕಾರ್ಯ ಮಾತ್ರತೆಯ ಬುದ್ಧಿವೃತ್ತಿ ಅವಿಶಿಷ್ಟ ಹಿ ಜ್ಞಾನ ವೃತ್ತಿ ಆಖ್ಯಾಯತೆ ಸೊ ದ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಹಸ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಸಮ್ ಶೇಪ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಅಸ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಪರ್ಸೆಪ್ಷನ್ ಸೊ ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಲುಕ್ ಅಟ್ ಅ ಫ್ಲವರ್ ದ ಇಂದ್ರಿಯಾಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಪ್ರಾಪಗೇಟೆಡ್ ದಟ್ ಇನ್ಫಾರ್ಮೇಶನ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಫ್ಲವರ್ ದಟ್ ಹಸ್ ಬಿಕಮ್ ದ ಆಲಂಬನ ಆಫ್ ದ ಚಿತ್ತ ಸೊ ಚಿತ್ತ ಹಸ್ ಸೊ ಟು ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಅಸ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಪ್ಷನ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ದ ಶೇಪ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ ಫ್ಲವರ್ the influence of the buddhi of the purusha has given a so called chaitanya so the purusha also is that influence let's call it the reflection of the purusha so that reflection also takes the same form the same form that the chitta has taken in this case of the flower so it becomes buddhi vritti avishishta it is no different from the shape and form or state that the buddhi itself has so this particular thing is known as jnana vritti so this is the jnana vritti so again just to explain a little bit so let's say one looks at a flower then that information flows to the indriya pranali through the eyes etc so the indriyas which is actually it is a part of the antakkarana bhedaha it is a the indriya is not the physical eye it is that part of the inner instrument which is the chitta that is functions as reaching out to the world so through that that impressions of the flower in terms of rupa primarily but shabda sparsha rupa rasa gandha in general those impressions fall upon the chitta and as part of the perception chitta takes that form of the flower the flower in sanskritam is called pushpam so let's say that because that instrument that is the chitta takes the shape it is so to speak it says pushpam so it has taken that uh, shape and the representation of pushpam so the chitta is so to speak it is saying pushpam now at the same time the influence of the purusha has fallen upon the chitta and the influence of the purusha is that of the knower the seer so the influence of the purusha brings in the aspect that is i know aham janami so that aspect is not coming from the flower that aspect is coming from the purusha so the aham janami coming from the i know that is coming from the purusha purusha's influence and the pushpam or the flower that is coming from the flower's influence come together so that the chitta can take the form pushpam aham janami this is i know the flower so that is the both the understanding that takes place so the i know part of it aham janami part of it which is in the shape of the chitta that is the flower is the gnana vritti and the pushpam part of it which is the chitta as the flower without the mixing of the i know that is known as the buddhi vritti so there is the buddhi vritti and the gnana vritti and here vyasa is saying the gnana vritti is that aspect of the chitta that has obtained the influence of the purusha to become the knower as it were and then that knowership that has fallen on the chitta takes the same form that the chitta has which in this our example is the flower and that form of the knower at that state is known as jnana vritti and therefore the resultant cognition is pushpam aham janami i know the flower so that is the mechanism because this is how the sutra began katham how is this purusha 
the bhog trishakti how is it is the bhogta how is it the experience so this is how it is the experience so that is what has been explained by this notion of buddhi vritti and jnana vritti in this line so it is intriguing to believe that purusha sattva doesn't move because we get to feel like we say i am on the move so we refer to subjective entity and we say i am on the move and we think we are always on the move and we can be on the move and we move but the metaphysics has have something else to tell us and they emphatically say it is aprati sankrama but then seems to be sankramita immovable but seems to be moving now this is also uh, described with a wonderful example that we uh, come across in our life say suppose you are sitting in a train and it is stationary on a track and there is a adjacent track and there is another train uh, stationary on that track now when that train is commencing to move we get the feeling that our train is moving so something like op- uh, optical illusion we get this feeling our train is still stationary but the t- t- train on the neighboring track starts to move and we get the feeling that our train is moving the f- we get the feeling but then we can re- confirm that our train is still stationary but the adjacent train is moving another example is that when you are traveling in a train or a vehicle you get the feeling when you look out in the window you feel that the trees are running backwards the mountains are running mountain range is running backwards the trees are running backwards now the trees don't move but they seem to be moving the mountains don't move but or the land the uh, kind of uh, the surrounding scenery doesn't move but it seems to be moving so similarly here we don't move the time is moving the t- time is moving the matter is running matter is moving it is a fleeting flux so the matter is on the move and we think we are on the move and what does it is tell us here that aprati sankrama no that entity is a aprati sankramita aprati sankrama it doesn't move when it seems to be moving this is because of prutti sarupyam that because the seeming pur seemingly purusha entity which is chitta that is like iron ball becoming fire ball in the fire now it is iron ball black opaque solid but when it is kept in a fire for a long duration it becomes it appears to be fire ball it becomes fire ball it is translucent not black at all but red otherwise the iron ball is black but the fire ball is red so as long as it is in the in the fire it will seem to be fire ball similarly the chitta which is insentient which is inert because of the proximity with the purusha it becomes seemingly conscious that is called bhasamana chaitanyam and the bhasamana chaitanyam uh, gets the feeling of movement that moves from incarnation to incarnation so it transmigrates so atma metaphysical entity doesn't transmigrate but this seemingly conscious principle is in movement and that is why we feel that we are in movement because there is that ditto identification by vritti sarupyam which we have considered earlier on a earlier occasion another example is that suppose there is a empty pot and in an empty pot there is invariably space now the pot is moving we think the space is moving space in the pot is moving the space in the pot really doesn't move because space is all pervasive there is no movement in a principles elements such as 
space. But because the pot is moving from location to location, we deem that the space in the pot is also moving from location to location. But the space is immovable. It is because absolute. It is absolutely per, all pervasive vibhu. So it has no place to move. So how can it move? But it seems to be moving because it is in the delimitation of a pot. So similarly, our atma, which is in the delimitation of the psychic consciousness, it seems to be moving. So, like optical illusions, or another example is that suppose there is a disc painted with seven colors, and when it is rotated fast, it appears to be white. It doesn't show those seven colors and different colors. It appears to be white while it is not white. There are colors in it. So similar is the case here. We think our subjective entity metaphysically is a movable entity. It moves from moment to moment, day to day, year to year, decade to decade, century to century, life to life. But it doesn't move. It seems to be moving because of the the bhasamana chaitanya which chitta becomes. And just now you heard about the jnana vritti. So similarly, it is taken that the jnana of the chitta is the jnana of the purusha. And therefore, there are the paurushaya jnana and vrittyatma jnana, which is described in the psychology of yoga. And we have dealt with it earlier. So, metaphysicists are giving a revelation which otherwise won't occur to our mind, basically, a professor krama and tadakara pattau, tadakara patti, that there is uh, like moon reflects in the water, it's a reflection. Similarly, there is this chichaya patti, also discussed earlier. So that tells us about how this and metaphysicists are giving this revelation and which counters the stand of the panpsychists which we uh, considered in the previous sutras. Okay. Okay, so continuing the Bhashya, Vyasa refers to another verse. He says, Tathaja Uttam. So therefore it is said, Napatalam nachavivaram girinam, naivandhkaram kukshayo nodadinam, guhayasyam nihitam brahmashashatam, buddhivrityam avishishtam kavayo vedayante. So, where does the brahmashashvatam, which refers to the pure purushatattva, where does it reside? Because it is said, Nihitam Guhayam. It is, it resides hidden in a cave. So which, what is this cave? Where is it? Which is, Napatalam Nacha Vivaram Girinam. It is not the lower worlds. Patalam means, there is this conception of worlds below, so, I mean, as, as it is said, on nether worlds. So those nether regions of Patala, that is not where it is. Macha Vivaram Girinam, it is not in the mountain caves. Naivandhakkaram, so it is not in darkness. Kukshayo Nodadinam, nor in the hidden cavities deep under the sea. Oha Yasyam Nihitam Brahma Shashvatam, the cave in which this eternal, pure, Brahma, which is the Purusha Tattva resides. Buddhi Vrittim Avishishtam Kavayo Vedayanti. The wise, the rishis, the seers, the tell us that it is nothing but the Avishishta Buddhi Vritti, which we just saw. That part of the Buddhi, which has received the Chaitanyam from the Purusha, that is where it resides and that is where it can be cognized. So this is also something that we have seen before. Even in the Samadhi Avastha, it is never Sampragnata Samadhi or Viveka Kshati, etc. It is not as though the Chitta sees the Purusha. That never happens. It is still looking at the influence of the Purusha on itself. 
that gets known that is realized so buddhi vrittim avishishtam is non different from the state of the buddhi that particular influence that has fallen that is where the brahma shashvatam the purusha tattva is hidden and can be reached so that is the uh, vyasa invokes or brings about these lines here to further um make it more firm in our understanding that this is what is happening the chaitanya falling upon the buddhi so that's the bhashya of 4.22 so vyasa is quoting a uh, krantadarshi kavi a uh, kavi means one who is krantadarshi means one who is able to see the truth which is not possible for you and me mortals and therefore the postulation here is mysterious it tells us about the mysticism with regards to purusha tattva so it's a combination of metaphysics and mysticism and so that clearly postulated the wiser ones called krantadarshi kavi the truth seer seeking or truth seers the truth realized kavis tell us about it that it is as it is postulated in the sutra that it is nowhere to be found a uh, particular location etc etc which we think that it is spatialized but it is not that it is all pervasive and that's aspect of mysticism which comes in postulation of the spiritual entity of purusha okay now we move on to 4.23 so vyasa begins by saying atasth etat abhyapagamyate so this is how it is understood and accepted how is that kam sutra 4.23 drashtra drishyo paraktam chittam sarvartham the chitta that is colored by the drashtra which is a seer in the drishya which is the seeable or the seen colored by both of these the chitta is sarvartham sarvartham is everything can be the vishaya of it it it, it can cognize perceive everything so this chitta is sarvartham because it is influenced by both the seer and seer category or the seer and the seen anything in the seen category anything that can be seen that is drishya so the drishta refers to the purusha drishya refers to what we call the prakriti category all the evolutions of prakriti so drishta drishya yo parakam chittam sarvartham that is sutra 4.23 so now we look at the bhashya vyasa begins by saying manohi mantavyena arthena uparaktam so the manas is colored by the mantavya artha whatever is the subject of the mind or the chitta whatever it is it is colored by that just like our example of the flower or it can be if it's not a direct perception it can be a memory smriti it can be anything else but by that it is colored tat svayam cha vishayatvat vishayana purushena आत्मीयया वृत्या अभिसंबद्धम सो दिस मनस बाय इटसेल्फ सी इट इज कलर्ड बाय द मंतव्य बट द मनस इटसेल्फ ऑफ द चित्स इटसेल्फ बिकॉज़ इट इज आल्सो अ विषय इट इज आल्सो अ नोएबल फॉर द पुरुष सो हु इज इफ इफ द चित्त इज द विषय और द नोएबल हु इज द नोवर इट इज पुरुष तत्स्वयं विषयत्वाषयुषेन्यायावृत्यालोजली रिटेड टू दुरुष बाय 
that atmi yaya vritti that we that we just saw the influence of the purusha on the uh, through which the knowledge process happens etc so by that vritti it is closely related abhi sambandham tat etat chittam eva drashtru drishyoparaktam visaya visayi nirbhasam chetana chetana swarupapannam okay so now what is the nature of the chitta this chitta itself is drashtra drishyoparaktam influenced by the drashta which is the seer and the drishya which is the seen category so influenced by both or colored by both drashtra drishyoparaktam okay what else about the chitta visaya visayi nirbhasam so it shines in the form of the visaya it is just like we saw the visaya if it is a flower it is shining in the fl- form of the flower or it appears at the same time also in the form of the visayi because it also uh, appears in the shape of the knower of the flower so the visaya and the visayi both are factored in in the form in which it shines or appears chetana chetana swarupa pannam so it is it uh, it gets the form of being a chetana because the influence of the purusha has as though lent its power to it so as though seemingly con- conscious so that is chetana and a chetana because by nature actually it is a chetana it is not a conscious entity it is just an instrument so chetana chetana swarupa pannam so there are these three adjectives or describing words for chitta drashtra drishyo paraktam visaya visayi nirbhasam chetana chetana swarupa pannam visayatmakam api avishayatmakam iva achetanam chetanam iva spatika manikalpam sarvartham ityachate so it is visayatmakam which means it is itself in the knowable category but still avishayatmakam iva as though it itself is the knower and therefore as though it is not a knowable but a knower achetanam which means non sentient not conscious but chetanam iva as though conscious spatika mani kalpam just like the spatika mani spatika mani is a common illustration used in indian shastras as in uh, like if you have a mani which is a gem which purely reflects so if you get a red flower close to it it appears red etc so in this case spatika mani kalpam because on one side the vishayas are coming in like the flower the pot etc on the other side the purusha is coming in the uh, throwing its influence so this particular clear crystal clear gem is being colored by them so spatika mani kalpam so it is as though the crystal is taking that form because the flower it appears red because the purusha it appears as though it is conscious so spatika mani kalpam sarvartham ityachate so it is known as sarvartham because it is as though everything is a possible artha for it so it can interact it can reflect everything that there is so sarvartham ityachate so tat anena chitta sarupyena bhrantaha kechit tadeva chetanam ityahu so because of all this and because they are deluded by the chitta sarupyena by the fact that the chitta takes the form of the vishaya and the vishayi the knowable and knower those that are deluded by it kechi those think that that itself is chetanam that itself is the conscious principle so here once again one of the buddhist schools is being referred to which considers the chitta itself as conscious apare okay there are other people chitta matram eva idam sarvam 
नास्ति खलु अयम गवादिर्घटादिश्च सकारणो लोके इति सो द देयर आर अदर्स दैट से एवरीथिंग इज चित्त अलोन एवरीथिंग इज कमिंग फ्रॉम द माइंड रियली स्पीकिंग देयर इज नो काउ देयर इज नो पॉट देयर इज नथिंग देयर इज सिंपली द माइंड देयर इज नो लोक द वर्ल्ड इट इज जस्ट द माइंड प्रोजेक्टिंग इटसेल्फ सो देयर आर अदर्स दैट से दैट so there is one set of people who say that the chitta itself is a conscious entity there is another set of people who says that there is nothing in this world everything is a chitta alone which is projecting itself so there are these people anukampaniya hate they are more to be pitied okay so we have we have to have some sympathy for them says vyasa and then he will explain why that is the case but so far we have seen why the chitta is said sarvartham and why because of its nature as being appearing sarvartham some may be deluded into having wrong conceptions about the chitta and the world so again a very intriguing aspect divulged here like the mind is considered to be subjective entity and then we say mind knows the rose mind knows the cow so it has its objects all the empirical objects are and therefore in relation to the objects we think the mind is subjective entity but a human psychic consciousness is so constituted that it can also become it can make the very subjective entity as an object like as we say i see the rose i know the rose i know the cow i know the fire at the same time we also have this perception that i know i am angry i know i am sad i am i know i am disturbed who is disturbed so we refer to that as a subjective entity so it is drashtru drushyo paraktam chittam sarvartham the mind can cognize the objects and mind can cognize itself so actually mind is cognizing itself as well like a mirror will be reflecting mirror doesn't reflect itself into it there has to be other another mirror for the mirror to be reflected into another mirror the mirror mirror is reflector it reflects but it itself is not reflecting into itself but here the chitta is both drashtru paraktam drashyo paraktam therefore sarvartham therefore it is all knower now we are used to making an expression mind over matter this is the expression that we bring in english we think mind is subjective entity and now is a mind over matter mind itself is a matter because there is ignorance about metaphysics the mind itself is considered to be a uh, subjective entity or conscious entity and therefore we say mind over matter no mind itself is a matter so therefore you heard the two examples uh, two statements made by vyasa one is to refute the positions of pan psychics uh, they think that chitta itself is the self chitta itself is a subjective entity so that's a bhranti and therefore like you heard in the vijnanavada of buddhism they said uh, it is all chitta that is knowing the knowing entity is chitta the knower entity is chitta so chitta that anena chitta sarupena bhranta they don't understand it is chitta swaru sarupyam vrutti sarupyam archid chaya patti as we had discussed earlier they do not posit this at all they don't i didn't i actually admit the other entity which we admit as purusha atma tattva chaitanyam 
and therefore they have that bhranti and the other one is pan psyche so say everything is mind there are no objects at all so some people say that is only objects and the chitta is only cognizer of it while some people say that there is there are no objects the the uh, nihilist in buddhist sect or shunyavadins they don't accept the objects at all they say if the objects are there it is mind fabrication chitta chit fabrication and objects don't exist so these are the people who do not have uh, acceptance or posit the spiritual entity chaitanya tatvam purusha tatvam atma tatvam they have a problem because they don't admit it and therefore we must have uh we must have pity for them because of their ignorance so that's how when vyasa says we should have pity for them that means they stand completely refuted their stand stands completely refuted so that's the beautiful part of commentary that we have just now considered which is refuting the nihilism and and psychism vijnanavada and shunyavada and the mind is both it knows itself and it knows the objects and mind is capable of also realizing the self that's why we have concept of self realization in spiritualism or spirituality or adhyatma so it can know the knower it can know the knowable and therefore the chitta is sarvartham so it will be knowing the all the three entities in one sense the knower knowing known knower knowing knowable the mind can be objectifying all the the three for itself that's the marvel of this chitta so it's a marvelous entity therefore sarvartham it can be all knower all knowing okay so we have just said anukampani yaha the so they are to okay, we should have sympathy for them now why is that kasmat because he says asti hi tesham bhranti bijam sarva rupakara nirbhasam chittam iti he said okay there is a valid reason why one may be deluded why one may be confused why because there is a bhranti bijam there is a seed for this confusion where what is the seed it is the sarva rupa karo nirbhasam chittam because this chitta it appears in all forms it appears as because of it being influenced by the purusha by the vishayas of the world it appears in all forms so it is understandable that one may misinterpret and misconstrue the form of the chitta now we continue he says samadhi pragnyayam pragneyo arthah pratibimbi bhutah tasya alambane bhutatvat anyah so here is specifically talking about those that believe that this whole creation is a projection of the mind nothing really exists there is no cow there is no pot it is just imagination and conception of the mind for that he takes recourse to samadhi in the samadhi pragnya the chitta is perfectly pure now in this state the pragneyo arthah so the alambanam the dhyeya vastu which is being known by the samadhi pragnya pratibimbi bhutah being reflected because it is it has become a support of the chitta it has to be different has to be different from what from the chitta why is that so in the samadhi pragnya firstly it is the chitta is completely purified and then we also say artha matra nirbhasa so the part about i know is withdrawn and the knowable the known itself shines since it is shining and becoming a support of the chitta that itself cannot be chitta it is a different from the chitta but if you don't accept if you still insist no no the world is made up of chitta this is sachet arthah chitta matram syat 
so if you still say no no this is chitta matram then katham pragnaya eva pragnya rupam avadharyate so if it if you still insist that it is not different from the cow or whatever is being held and being known in samadhi which is there is no such cow how can that happen and furthermore how can if the cow is also a pragnya rupam the samadhi pragnya is also a pragnya how can you hold the pragnya rupam steady by pragnya itself how how, how can that be explained okay because in general the karta and karma are two different things so the one that is holding the thing that is held there are two separate things so it is anya so katham pragnaya eva pragnya rupa avadhariyate so it, it is inconsistent it doesn't fit tasmat pratibimbi bhuto arthah pragnayam yena avadhariyate sa purusha iti so so essentially what is being said is specifically in the samadhi state which is very much the subject matter of yoga and is experienced by the yogi and the activity of the chitta at that time is restrained chitta is not active and doing things imagining things seeing things all of that has been restrained and yet there is a artha which is a support of the chitta there is a dheya vastu whatever it is which is the subject matter or the topic of that samadhi if the chitta is in the state not functioning not active okay so then in that state pragnayam this artha the thing that is the dheya vastu that has become the support of the chitta who is it being held steady by who is ascertaining ascertaining it okay who is it being ascertained by so that is the purusha so tasmat pratibimbi bhuto arthah the arthah that has been reflected pragnayam in the state of samadhi where the chitta is not in activity at all then yena avadharyate one who is supporting it one who is holding it one who is ascertaining it ascertaining it sa purusha iti that is the purusha so there is a beautiful ex- explanation that can only come from yoga because the, the yoga marg the, the yoga thinking is one coming from direct experience so it is the yogis who have undergone samadhi who know what is samadhi and who can take recourse to the state of samadhi to then explain and establish what is the role of purusha and why by taking recourse to that particular state other imaginations like saying the world is not real it is a projection of the mind etc it can be refuted so there is a beautiful line elsewhere it says pratyaksha hetavo yogaha sankhyaha shastra nishchayaha so the, there is a slight distinction there being drawn by people involved in yoga and people involved in sankhya the sankhya are shastra nishchayaha they are looking at shastra and forming their nishchayas whereas yoga they give primacy to experience pratyaksha hetavo so their own experiences which here refers to the perception alaukika pratyaksha or sakshatkara the pratyaksha that comes in the yogic state so here this is an example where the samadhi state is being used to establish their siddhanta so at the, in the state of samadhi the one that is holding the artha in the chitta that cannot be the chitta itself and the one that is holding that that is the purusha yena avadharyate sa purushah iti and then vyasa concludes by saying evam grihitra grahana graya swarupa chitta bhedat prema api etat jatitah pravibhajante ते सम्यक् दर्शिनः तैः अधिगतः पुरुषः इति सो इन कंक्लूजन ही सेस दैट गृहित्र ग्रहण ग्राह्य सो गृहित्र मींस अ नोअर ग्रहण मींस द नोइंग प्रोसेस ग्राह्य मींस द थिंग दैट इज नोन इन दीस थ्री एसेंशियल एस्पेक्ट्स द थ्री स्वरूपास 
chitta bheda chitta influenced or in these three roles trayam api eta jatitah pravibhajyante so they say essentially these are different these are different categories so jatitah so uh, seeing this as different categories of the functioning of the chitta or the role of the chitta te samyak darshinah they are the ones who are seeing correctly tahi adhigatah purushah they have understood the purusha and therefore the whole uh, line of reasoning about the sankhya yoga conception or uh, and in a broader sense the astika conception and the further detail of how it is to be understood and why the other points of view of the various conceptions of the chitta and the world they are incorrect etc has been established and as part of that a lot of uh, teaching about the nature of the chitta the purusha and their quote and quote interaction is also explained that is for the bhasha of 4.23 so it's a uh, quite intriguing and all inspiring discussion actually if you try to dive into it it is such a condition that i know rose but it doesn't stop there i know what i i know that i know so i know that i know i know that i know the rose so this chitta is a marvel it is so positioned and so constituted and the yogis with their abilities with their processes purifying the chitta to manikalpa spatik like crystal like then they get this grahitru grahana grahya samapattis grahitru samaka sama samanakarata ग्राह्य समानाकारता आणि ग्रहित्र समानाकारता चित्त इज अ मार्वल अँड आवर सायकी इज रिअली इंडिड अ मार्वल बिकॉज इट डजंट ओनली नो द वर्ल्ड वी ऑल्सो कॅन एंड अप से आय नो दॅट आय नो सो ट्राय ट्राय टू ओपन आउट दॅट जार्गन if it is appearing to be jargon i know that i know i know that i do not know so who is the knower and who is the knowable who is the known when you say i know that i know that means there is that i know which is representing subjective entity and i know that i know is representing there is also representation of the objective entity so human psyche is a marvel that it can be very very intriguing and it can be confounding confusing just how you heard the sankhyas take recourse to, recourse to the testimony of the shastras and patanjalas tell us that it is a matter of experience it can be experienced is experienceable so that's little marvel about the chitta when you dive little deeper into it then you will realize that you don't just have a mind you have a marvel you don't just just have a chitta but there is a marvel okay okay so let's stop here that's for that 23 beside the shlokas and guruji and end the session vaigyanikam pravaktritva asane shukala vidham योगाभ्यासे योगाभ्यासम वंदेह सुंदर गुर योग वृक्षो हि लोकेस्ेरिणेन वर्धि योगाचार्य गुरो तोभ्यं सुंदराय नमो नम थैंक यू नमस्कार ऑल ऑफ यू